Welcome back to Legends and Libations. I'm Lindsay Theodorovich. And I am Kylie Hoverdies. And we're discussing... Do I call them Ozark Spook Lights? Yeah, I guess. Ozark Spook Lights. Yeah, so throughout the Ozarks, there are light phenomena um, that are commonly known as spook lights or ghost lights. And they've been reported for centuries globally, but in the Ozarks, you might be able to find your very own. So today we're going to talk about three different regional Ozark spook lights and we have paired each of those with a slightly larger than a shot shot, um, so a mini cocktail I guess. Um, so we will include the recipes in the description box below so you can try them along with us. Let us know what you think. Um, but we'll just go ahead and get right to it, I guess. Yes. So our first story um, actually comes from the southwest Missouri and northeast Oklahoma area, and this is the Hornet Spook Light. Um, it's also known as the Joplin Spook Light. This is one I have not heard of. This is one of them that I have heard of. I've never been looking for it, but I would love to. We I mean, that's like really close to our area. Yes. For sure. So it's Droplin Spook Light, Tri State Spook Light. Um, but let's start with our drink. It's the Hornet. So this is a shot that has a combination of rum chata, Kahlua, and grenadine. It's the one I think I'm going to like. Yes. <laughs> so you can take, take the one over there. This is the one I'm most concerned about. I'm not a huge. Least concerned. Well, now I'm not. Kahlua because I don't fan. Look at that. It dances. Yeah, it's a little... It looks like a mother from oh. kombucha. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. Um, so this is red because sometimes the Hornet Spook Light has been said that it's red and it's best seen on a overcast day. So we have clouds and then the red Spook Light. I think I'm just a rum chata chick. So let's see. Do you, are you going to shoot it? I That's too much to I shoot. I think it's too much. Okay, because I'll like choke I and want like, both, it'll come out my nose. I want both of the layers. Even though it looks kind of yucky. At once? Yeah, but I don't think it's going to happen. We'll just see. I think, well, you got to do the corner. That's what you get in the corner! Mm. Mm hmm. I like it. It's reminiscent of like a chocolate covered cherry. Yeah, it's like a, ch it's like a cherry even. cordial. Yeah. Like those. No, for real, yes. That's those grandma candies. Don't you have grandma candies? I give them to my grandma every so year. Fuck, I buy <laughs> They're them delicious. for myself. <laughs> well, you saw them last time you were here. I have them for my grandma, but yes, mm. this is delicious. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. That taste was amazing. You said least favorite, you thought. Mm-hmm. Mm. Dude, that taste was. Does yours have like chunks in it? Don't speak. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's because the rum chata, there's some type of dairy of some kind, something curdled. <laughs> I kind of like it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I don't, because I just got. It, it feels like boogers. <laughs> Not that I've eaten or otherwise consumed them. Okay, so these... There's something that relates to a lot. Let's time. know that these have been sitting here for probably two hours now. Because we've been, like... Talking. Yeah. <laughs> so... Pretty sure we have ADD, so mm. we don't know. We're surprised this mm. is even going. Yeah, I can't. But it's good. Just, You're going to finish it? No, it's Why the is... chunks for me. It's good. Drink it fast. Do you want... Mine is like extra chunky for some No, mine was too. That's why I had to shoot it. <laughs> it's very sweet. So, while she chokes down the chunky um, Hornet Spook Light hmm. bevy, <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and... Oh, excellent job. I hope those aren't thick. <laughs> <laughs> That's like cough medicine. Yeah, dude. But was, was the flavor okay? No, the flavor was okay. 
really good. Maybe I had too, we had too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all Dollar Tree. Had. Yeah, we didn't have the appropriately sized shot glass. We just so. had New Year's. Yeah, we were apparently out. Dollar General's bought out of shot glasses. So live and learn. Improvise. So <laughs> after our delightful bevy there, <clears throat> um, we'll dive into the history of the Hornet Spook Light. So Hornet Spook Light. Um, you might see it bobbing along dirt roads in northeast Oklahoma or southwest Missouri. The light sometimes spotted near a small town called Quapaw, Oklahoma, which I have no idea where that is. I've heard of Quapaw. Um, but it's actually most often seen to the east of that, which is why it's actually been most often attached to the small town of Hornet, Missouri, which is just outside of Joplin. I've never heard of Hornet, Missouri. Like, out of yeah. everything I you just said, I've never heard of Hornet. Yeah. So, I've only ever heard this referred to as the Joplin Spook Light. And I think most people that might watch this have probably heard it referred to as that as well. Um, but it's often described as an orange to red ball of light, and it will travel from east to west along a four-mile gravel road that is unfortunately called the Devil's Promenade by locals. Why don't we have names like that around here? I'm sure there are. Like nobody, nobody just nobody wants to say that because it that sounds spooky. But the <laughs> which we like, yes. so we'd be into it. Um, the Hornet Spook Light has a pretty long history with some legendary origins, um, and like a lot of origins in this area. A lot of them relate to indigenous people um, and kind of the romance and mystery associated with them, even if there's not any actual basis in history. So the Hornet Spook Light is one of those. Um, according to some of these legends, the light was actually first seen by Indians who were traveling along the Trail of Tears. Which runs through this entire area. Oh yeah, it's all over. Um, I'll try to include a map or a link yeah. so folks can see um, just how spread out. There's not a single Trail of Tears. <clears throat> I'm dying. Um, <laughs> oh, don't die. Yeah, there's not a single a Trail of Tears. I think a lot of people assume that it was one road or one migration of people, but there are several. Yeah, tons of just roads that historically we have marked areas were that, used. Yeah. However, the signs are faded and they should be updated. Arkansas. I think it's National Park Service actually. National Park Service actually in Arkansas. <laughs> um but you know whether there is truth to that or not we don't know. Um but the first written account that we can point to was in 1881 when a publication called the Ozark Spook Light was first released. Um, and since then it has increasingly been seen and it's a pretty popular attraction for weird people like us um, to go to the Joplin area specifically and look for it. So the light's described as a ball of fire ranging from the size of a, ba a baseball to a basketball that spins down the center of this dirt road at high speeds. It will rise and hover above treetops and then um, kind of shrink back into trees and disappear. And it'll just appear out of nowhere and then disappear just this as quickly. That sounds very familiar. <laughs> uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about some of that later too. So others have also said that it will sway from side to side like a lantern light carried by mm. someone. Um, but unique to the Hornet Spook Light that we don't see in the other two stories that we'll be talking about is that folks have actually seen it inside cars as well, which is terrifying. Um, I can't mm -hmm. imagine you're just driving and then all of a sudden there's this blinding orange or red light inside your car. Um, but a few people have been walking along the road at night and have also had the light pass close enough to them that they felt heat radiating off of it. So they're interested. Yeah, it's not just some sort of ambient light. It has heat. Some sort of energy. Yeah, 
heat energy, potential electricity, something is radiating from it that you can see and also feel. According to locals, the best time to see the spook light is between 10 p.m. and midnight, which, you know, it's a good spooky dark time. So Those are my times. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, but apparently the light won't show up when you have large groups of people or a lot of loud noises happening. Um, you know, it kind of sounds like the White River Monster. When it sounds like you're doing all with the same intentions. Yeah, you have to have the right intention, um, a small group of like-minded people, and it seems like you need to be patient enough to wait for it to come to you. Um, but regardless of, of all of that, the light's been seen for over a hundred years. So there have been many explanations for what the Hornet spook light might be um, from natural gas that is escaping from the earth to car lights reflecting off of different things like signs and billboards, um, even a luminescence created by rotting organic matter, which I, I really had to look into because I've never heard of that, but apparently that's kind of a common explanation for these phantom lights that you'll see. Um, uh, all of these don't really hit on everything for me. They're not super conclusive. Um, the theory of natural gas, which is also seen in marshy areas, um, could make sense. Which exists in this area. Yes, but the Hornet spook light is seen in all different kinds of weather. It can be raining, um, it can be super windy, and I'm just thinking if you have some kind of natural gas escaping from the ground and it somehow gets set on fire, if it's raining it's probably going to stop. Um, and I also don't know how that would make sense that it would move throughout space. Right. I'm not science. <laughs> established. We've established. We this. know this. The idea of a um, bioluminescent rot rotting organic matter could potentially make sense, but um, again, we're not science. I don't know that it would be bright enough. Something that is bioluminescent, unless there are like tons of bioluminescent algae or jellyfish the or types of lights described seen in within the Ozarks yeah. here are not what I think would be coming from in organic matter. Yeah. Just like rotting stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I believe that can be a thing maybe seen on a, like a super high definition, like camera of some kind of camera yeah. that can totally see all the time, but I don't think the types of lights we've seen here are not what that's describing. Yeah. Not science, but I'm just saying. Yeah. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense that it would be that bright. And again, it doesn't make sense that it would move. I or, mean, are they describing it as a ball? Yeah. I have a hard time believing it's going to show up as a ball. I would think of yeah. like a, like, like fumes, like yeah. rays. Like or, a foggy kind of yes, foggy. stuff. Um, Mist. But yeah, it is just described as a baseball to basketball sized sphere of light that spherical travels <laughs> independent of anything else around it. Um, so again, I, I can't really buy into that one. Your research is the first time I ever hear of it, just so you know, just like when I sit here, this is the first time I'm hearing of this stuff. So well, it's a real time reaction. Yeah, no, it's, it, and some of this, like the idea of bioluminescent decaying organic matter, was the first. I've never heard of that either. It's combustion, apparently, too. So. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know how these things that seem kind of like a one-off, cool natural occurrence would be so predictable that they would be tied to these places, and people would go for hundreds of years at a time and regularly see these things popping up. Um, right. The other explanation of headlights, um, you know, maybe sometimes people go there 
thinking that they're seeing um, the hornet light and it is something like headlights, that does happen. Or someone else looking with a flashlight. Yeah, or... yeah. But um, people were seeing these before auto automobiles were common. And they were seeing... Um, you know, in the 1800s, they were saying. From yeah. From 1881 or whatever yeah. it said. And they're seeing them before cars are common. And then they're also seeing them in these areas before there were even roads hmm. um, for cars to travel on. So um, I, don't, I don't know about that one. The one hmm. theory that does intrigue me, and it also comes up again um, with one of the next lights that we'll talk about, is an idea that the lights are electric atmospheric charges. So essentially, um, the idea behind this is that the tectonic plates along the new Madrid fault line rub and shift against each other, and that that shifting actually causes an electric field to be produced. Is this true? I don't know. But Not I would science. buy it. Not science. It sounds just science. Sciencey enough that I, I'm into it. Yeah. Like maybe there's something to that. There have been many scientific investigators and paranormal researchers that have tried to um, kind of figure out what is happening here, including the US Army Corps of Engineers, but no one has been able to find a conclusive answer. Or they too afraid to admit. Well, in in the case of the government, I could see some kind of like, oh, we might know what's happening, but I'm not going to talk about it. Um, but there are some interesting legends um, that do have kind of a more ghostly, interesting side to them. So, again, like I mentioned before, there's a heavy reliance on the mystery and romance of the American Indian. Um... We're With, just like literally heavily in that area. Yeah, there there was a lot of indigenous occupation and travel through this area. Um, the oldest story. Which when I think of Arkansas and like history and Arkansas history you're learning in school and stuff. It's like it's a lot of what I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely some of the more interesting and I think nowadays less commonly discussed parts of the region's history here. It gets overlooked quite often. Mm -hmm. um, so with the Hornet Spook Light, uh, the oldest story is of a Quapaw Indian maiden who fell in love with a young man, but her father did not want her to marry him um, because he didn't have a large enough dowry or he wasn't perceived as being able to care for her properly. The pair. Your dad's cared about that more now. Yeah. <laughs> the the pair eloped. Um, they went off on their own, got married, but they were pursued um, by a party of warriors, apparently sent by her father. And according to this legend, when the couple were about to be captured by this party that was hunting them down. Um, they joined hands above the Spring River and they jumped mm, to their Romeo death. And Juliet. Yeah, it, it's definitely a Romeo and Juliet moment here. So, interestingly, um, timeline wise, theoretically, this could make sense because you do have the first sightings of this light um, in the general time frame right after that was supposed, supposed to happen. The other legend talks about a miner. Um, I don't know what they would be mining in that area. I'm sure there's something, but... Where are they? Uh, northeast Oklahoma, southwest Missouri. I don't know fucking history either. I'm not history either. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I just I don't know what uh, geologic things we have that they would be mining. Um, but this miner, he had a cabin, again, that was attacked by indigenous people. Um, unnamed, of course, just blanket <laughs> Indians uh, attacked him. And upon his return, he found that his wife and his children were missing. And supposedly he continued looking for them. And the light is his lantern 
as he is walking along mm -hmm. this road searching for his missing family. Um, I yawned, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Life. The other story that kind of goes along with the Hornet Spook Light is, I'll give you one guess, the ghost of a... No, Hornet. Ah, uh, no, it's an Osage. <laughs> no, I'm like, I don't know. We're... Osage Indian chief. It could be one or the other. Yeah. Indians that we've been talking about. Or a hornet. Or a hornet. Because <laughs> hornet. I don't know. I but wish it was the I've ghost, heard this on the ghost of a hornet. But this is an Osage Indian chief <laughs> who was <laughs> decapitated. Okay, better. And is searching for his head with a lantern held in his hand. Um, and this headless wanderer is another theme that we see in the next story, which is the Gurdon Light. So the Gurdon Light, um, we have another beverage. So our middle drink here. It looks um, like death. <laughs> it's a the very dark. Plague. It is a um, mixture of hypnotic vodka rum and a little splash of black cherry mead. in the light in the corner it's very pretty yeah it was supposed to be it? yeah it was supposed to be layered but no, it it's layered of, no it is still very layered as he read blue purple black yeah oh yeah i see or like it red too. lemonade yeah. blue black yeah so are you shooting this one um, I'm going to try to. So this one does have kind of a fun name. So I didn't want to name them all just Ew. like Hornet Light, Garden Light, whatever. So I, during my research, um, I was looking up some stuff about Garden and I found that their mascot at the high school is the Go Devil. And I was like, yeah. damn, that's badass. But get this, it's not like an excited devil at all. It's a piece of logging equipment. <laughs> um, but we gotta go to this place just to see how boring it is. I have been there. Oh. I have been there. So I used to work, um, one of my first like career jobs was at a park that is near Gurdon and I had to drive <gasps> through there when I I'm was... I'm so sorry. Where were you living? I was living in a camper at a state park. In the sure there? No. Oh, I was you. in the middle of nowhere and I would have to drive through Gurdon to get there. And, oh, bummer. So here we go. Down the hatch, because this one's yeah, small. This one's little. I had alcohol in it. Ooh. It was pretty. Are you, are you dead? That was a really strong one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Very reminiscent to Robitussin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. It could be just because it sat there for a minute. That's very... That's Hot! very much alcohol in it. It's warm! And I'm like... An, that's a shooter for sure. A baby to alcohol, but that... Um, I'm trying to build my tolerance. That's... Bernie. Yeah, yeah, that's a now shooter. You have burning with mittens like this in between us. <laughs> I will. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I, I want to try to. No. This is too bad. Yeah, they, these should all go away. They look yeah, really gross. Here, yeah, take, here. take that. Okay, so we are in the um, small community of Gurdon, Arkansas. Um, the, this is a really small town that really has two. Two, two claims to fame, one being it's the home of bluegrass musician Jimmy Witherspoon, and it's also the headquarters for the International Concatenated Order of the Hoo Hoo. Hoo Hoo. We refer to vaginas as Hoo Hoo. So it's not the International Order of Vaginas. I bet better. they get that a lot. And they I don't know, but it, it sounds a lot better than what they're talking What is it? It's a timber workers, like, union <laughs> kind of vibe. Um, and they're, I, I'm pretty sure that their mascot is a black cat. I'm remembering that from my time. For school or for, like, timber? No, for the the hoo-hoo. 
they're like, it's like a black cat. Um, oh, man. Arkansas. Yeah. So I'm so glad we live up here in yeah. this region of Arkansas. This is the, we're in the weird part of Arkansas right yeah. now. You know, Jimmy Witherspoon, sure, he's great. International Order of Who, sure, they're great. If you hear clicking, clacking, it's my giant my love. dog. Um, giant. It's but huge. What I get no Gurdon from I. is the Gurdon light, which is another spook light. So <laughs> it's a bed. We have lots of visitors. The Gurdon light has become so ingrained in the local culture that it's kind of a rite of passage to go out and see it. Um, and according to locals, you can walk down the train tracks at night. And because who doesn't want to walk down train tracks in Arkansas? Train tracks at night. It'll be white to blue, again, circular sphere of light. It's terrible. <laughs> um, it will flicker on and off and will change positions really quickly, almost like it's teleporting or something like that. Um, like you'll look and it'll be there it's and then abrupt. No, it'll be super it. close to you and then you'll be like, oh shit, and then it'll be a half a mile away. So it's herky-jerky as hell. Um, and you, you know, might be walking closer and closer to it and you will get within 10 feet of it and then it will suddenly disappear and appear a quarter mile, half a mile back from you. Um, it, according to the accounts that I read, people aren't able to get super close to it. Um, so it's unlike the Hornet light where people get close enough that they feel heat radiating off of it. Um, and usually it's seen on super dark nights um, and best when it is cloudy or overcast. So the natural explanations for this are pretty similar to what we talked about with the Hornet light, including that the light is just headlights that are coming in. Um, Interstate 30 is two miles away from Gurdon, um, so some people think that it's just headlights that are shining that far, but I don't, I don't know if I'm into that. I know headlights. <laughs> yeah, you, there are two of them. There are two. <laughs> you see them, they're there, and Again, like with the um, Hornet spook light, people were seeing this before cars were super common. Many people, especially locals, do not buy into the headlight theory because they are so far away from Interstate is this 30. A, is this a dirt road? Or it's train tracks. Train tracks. So there are like, it's a pine tree Please tell me why road. they're saying headlights on a train tracks. I mean like, you got one light for a train. I think the argument is that like the train tracks are going and then maybe they turn, but theoretically the headlights could be shining back. We're on train tracks. I know. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm Arkansas. just saying what the people say. The people say. People of Gurdon were in. The non. Talk. No, it's the non believers. The people of Gurdon are like, it's not fucking headlights. Right. It's something else. And, um,. You know, I kind of believe that because they were seeing the lights um, several decades before Interstate 30 was built. Um, and again, we're on train tracks. We're not on a road or anything like that. Um, again, like we heard with the, uh, the Hornet light, maybe it's weird natural gas or maybe it's decomposing bioluminescent That's a lot of fucking natural gas going on. Like, I know. Maybe that should be checked out. Yeah, if there really was From that... From 1881 to now, let's check this shit out. That much natural gas on fire just floating around, you would think people would know. So, one of the theories is... Let me taste this. Weird swamp gases. Um, and this was such a prevalent theory that... Down there, they do have swamp-like places. Yeah, I don't... I Off the top of my head, with my very limited only highway experience with Gurdon didn't see any swamps. Well, no. Doesn't mean they're not there. Down towards Hot Springs area, south, more south, there yeah. are some really swamp lands with really interesting trees. Yeah. And, and alligators. I do kind of believe in that swamp gas. Yeah. I, I think it's a thing. I Especially I, during certain times of the year with heat. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a real I'm thing. I'm not science. <laughs> 
Well, there are people we that... We should name this not science. Not science. And libations. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, lucky for <laughs> our dumbasses, there are people that are science. And they went to Gurdon and they had and a they weird, it. yeah, they had a swamp gas detector of this some. This is embalming uh, levels, uh, embalming, and bleh, embalming fluid levels in our prep room to make sure we're like matching state regulations and stuff. So I believe they went there and tested that. And I'm very curious. Yeah, like a f a fartometer or something. Yes. <laughs> so, for the swamp gases. And, um, swamp gas. they found no conclusive evidence of swamp gas. So, it's not swamp so gas. So it's not swamp gas at all. Like we talked about earlier with the Hornet light, some people think that the Gurdon light is also a weird geologic, uh, electrical... Like a magnetic field? Yeah. Gurdon sits atop an abundant deposit... Weird situation. Which we're on the Madrid Fault and we have all this limestone and all this other stuff that oh all hippy dippy mines, I can probably see something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and Gurdon, um you know, in the Ozark National For in the Ozark National Forest, a lot of lights like this are described and it's because <laughs> it's because of all the fucking minerals and shit that we have in our grounds. Yes! They talk about um, quartz crystal specifically, yeah. and it's also at the uh, southern end of the New Madrid Fault. So, theoretically, if you are science, we are not. You could make the argument that um, the tectonic plates again—they're shifting, they're interacting with the quartz crystal, and they as much as California has fucking like earthquakes and shit. I can kind of believe something. Oh, for sure. We, like, do, we do have earthquakes on here that, you know, on the app you can see who detects it. Only some of us feel it, but like people feel... I felt one in Bentonville. Well, there was once a earthquake that was so powerful on the New Madrid Fault that the Mississippi River ran backwards. I've never heard of that. Dude, true power facts. the way rivers run confuse the fuck out of me. It makes no sense. Because the White River, I thought it was supposed to go one way and it goes the other. So, quartz crystal, undergirding, making some weird electrical lights. Mm, I believe that though. I kind of do. I kind of do. I kind of do and I kind of don't. Arkansas don't is an amazing and mysterious place, I'm just saying. We do have several um, legends and lore, <coughs> things that I'm more into. Uh, since we're not science, that may... Exist. Since we're not science is what this needs to be named. <laughs> that since we're not science explain, and libations. <laughs> may explain what the hell the Garden Light is. So, um, most people tie the Garden Light to the history of the railroad. So, it's seen along railroad mm. tracks. It makes sense. Um, why, why were railroad, railroad routes and tracks, their track, where were they made? Was it based off of, like, conveniency, or was it based off of, like, I'm, magnetic fields? No, nah, dude, I'm thinking they're going where the money's at, right? Okay. So they're probably going to this area because... Fair enough. I don't I, think about money because I don't have any, so... I think about money because capitalism. I don't think about <laughs> money... I do think about money, though, because I don't have it. <laughs> a somewhat popular story is that a railroad worker... That's hard to say. Yeah. Railroad worker was working outside of town one night when he accidentally fell into the path of an oncoming train and was killed. That's fucking tragic. His head was severed and locals say that the light is, again, the lantern of him looking for his head sways back and forth. Would you be a way for me to logically explain, explain something as a redneck? <laughs> what? Be like, oh, it has to be him searching for something. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I would yeah. think that. It, it's weird because nobody is ever, like, explaining why someone would need a lantern if they don't have a head so they don't have eyes so they can't see. What am I looking for? Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> but um, another... There's <laughs> an enmity. <laughs> an an <laughs> enmity. <laughs> Another oh, railroad story is um, centered around an actual murder that it's happened. Only 40. Oh, that's not <laughs> bad. Near the railroad tracks um, in December 19. People believe that the Garden Light 
is related to that murder because it first appeared immediately after that. So I read things that everyone, what everyone believes is something that actually historically happened there. Mm -hmm. That people believe are haunting the place. Yeah. I. That's fucking scary. The next story, the Crossett Light, which comes out of Ashley County, Arkansas, is also connected to the area. That's a crazy area. Railroad industry. Mm -hmm. Um, the Crossett Light has been seen pretty consistently since the early 1900s. Um, but before we really dive into the history there, let's take a break. Our last drink is a. Um, Here for Annie. What is Cheers. it? What do we have? We have Rocktown Vodka, which Local. is distilled in Little Rock. And we also have um, some Sour Mix and then um, Chambord. Chambord? That purple. Mm -hmm. That fancy. Fancy purple, black raspberry. It's got stones on the lid. And it's beyond me. It's yeah. above me. <laughs> so this is another kind of big, big guy one. So I felt that and I feel that. Mm. Lemonade of some kind. It tastes so good. Yeah, it's like raspberry lemonade. We can just live with this. Mm-hmm. So I can replace <laughs> these with these. <laughs> be more expensive. Don't care. Here we go. So the Crossit Light um is another weird spherical light. I like that I got these because this is this is like a little mini cocktail. It and is. This one to sip on. And it feels fancy. And I like that it's square. Very modern. Very posh. very weird. It is very modern. Mm -hmm. If you drink from the corner, you get all the flavors. Drink from the side, mm -hmm. from the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be different. So <laughs> the cross the light will appear. It will disappear. You can't get close to it. Much like the garden light. I was going to say, what about the droplet light? Can't feel the heat from it. Yeah, can't feel the heat. So, um, also like the garden light, the Crossit light is, according to legend, the ghostly lantern of a railroad worker who lost his head. The Crossit light eventually became really famous, and in the early 1960s... I feel the Crossit light out of all these is the most popular out of everyone that I've heard because I've heard more people around me speak of the Crossit Light. I've never heard of the Crossit Light. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... We like, are so <laughs> going to have to visit this because literally the Cross... That's the first one I heard of before Gordon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't... Where's Crossit located? Ashley County, which... Don't ask me what that is because I don't know. We'll put it on a map. Okay. So, um, I want to compare all these places yeah. <laughs> and see if there's a pattern yeah, if, of some if kind. If they're in a line. What if they would... On a magnetic field. What if it's or tribal? Or like, you know, like... You know. Who knows? So, in the early 1960s, a group of graduate students from the Yale School of Forestry actually camped out to view the Crossit Light. In and Arkansas? I know. Are they from Arkansas? I know. They're from Yale. Yale. I don't know why. But they're here. To me, that tells me there's something behind it. So, and they see the light. They see the light. I see saying, the light. <laughs> it pulsates. Your fan's beautiful. From, thank you. From dim to a high glow and then dim again. So it's like uh, flashing. It's flashing. And they weren't able to explain why it was doing this. And... Um, Interesting. You can literally to this day explain the flashing because I'm waiting. I yeah, we don't we don't have a great gas is my ass. <laughs> gas is my ass. <laughs> we don't have a great explanation for this. Um, interest continues, and in 1962, the parapsychology lab at Duke University wrote a letter to a local writer in the Crossit area asking if it was worth their time for them to actually visit and look for the Crossit Light. Interestingly, that local writer responded to their letter and Brandy. said that no, it wasn't worth their time, which led a lot of people to thinking that it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's because it's Arkansas. So, it's not worth anyone's time. I, I don't know. So, um... But if it was that to me, I'd be super interested. I know! The Crossit Light inspired academics to take a really hard look at local spook lights. 
and one professor and some of their students from Southern Arkansas University studied the cross at light and revealed... I love that other people studied it. I know, lights. I know, and unfortunately it wasn't a super exciting explanation for what they saw. I don't say that. It was just car headlights. No, it's a <laughs> fucking train, a railroad. <laughs> so, There's not going to be a car on there. This is shit. definitely something I want to see it. Yeah. I, I believe it already no matter what, but I want to see it. Too many, too, too many, many people. fucking rednecks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I have to see what they're seeing because they're seeing something they're seeing that they something. don't know how to explain. Yeah, I agree 100%. So um, this group from uh, SAU, when they were there studying the cross at light, they set SAU. up SAU, Southern Arkansas University. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The mule rider. That's what. What? Yeah, I had a friend that went there part of the time. We gotta move on. This you know who you are, girl. I made a mess on the floor. <laughs> it's fine. I can't look at it anymore. So, um, the light's reflecting it because the light's so good now. They set up along the road, um, and they timed the sightings of the light with the traffic that was passing through. And mm. they found that the lights would appear to move up and down as cars would travel over dips in the road. So... Okay. You know, whatever. Cool. Names. Lights do that when they go over this in the road. But what about those things when cars aren't present there? I don't know. They found that most of the sightings occurred in the winter when the trees didn't have as many leaves so light would pass through. I'm sorry, oh, but that's here. when you're going to see more things happen when there's no trees and the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. I don't want to remember this. I, I wasn't able to. I don't want to remember that either. I looked. I couldn't find if they did this for the Hornet spook light, but they also looked at the Gurdon spook light, and they tr they debunked it as car lights as well. No! Where is their, tr where is their street? I don't know. Near... I don't know. I don't know. These lights, um, though we see three examples of them, at least in the Ozarks, they are kind of a global phenomenon. Um, they're pretty common in British folklore. Um, they're called Will of the Wisp. Um, okay, I, I have heard of this. It, it's essentially the same thing, sometimes called uh, Ignis Fautis. It sounds like um, a German-Polish type thing. I was going for Latin. <laughs> I, but I this makes me think of. I pronounce it wrong. I know I did, but I it's it. supposed to mean foolish fire, um, because the fire that you're seeing, this glowing sphere, isn't real. Okay, that's it's an illusion. Just kidding. <laughs> um, and the will of the wisp could She's be. She's much more educated than I am. Flickering in um, moors, marshes, uh, forested areas. Things that like doesn't that. explain anything to me, though. It's I know. Still telling you that they, in those regions they see those things. Yes. Yeah. So that tells me maybe there's an energy around these yeah. things. I don't know, but it is global. Which regions are we seeing these things in? So, um... It's significant to, like, you know, the Earth's magnetic fields and tectonic plates and all sorts of <laughs> science. I don't know because it's not science. I don't know. I don't know. They see it everywhere. They see it in the ne Netherlands, the Earl... Erlblas, which supposedly are souls of unbaptized children that are supposed to be, like, drawing that people. That makes me feel weird. Towards water where they can be baptized. Baptism has always been weird to me. Why? Because I was always told you won't get into heaven because you don't get baptized. Yeah. So and then I was baptized and I remember the day I have pictures of it and I just don't feel like it was real. Whoa. In in Asia, it's non-specific what Asian country or culture this comes from. Um, Alia or Alea are I strange. Like both of them. Alia strange. died in a plane crash. And I yeah. Miss her so much. Where the lights are is where somebody died. Um, in South America, Luz Mala, which is bad light, um, are spirits of the dead who carry these phantom lights with them. Woo! That's something I've never heard of before. I like that. Thank you. I took Spanish in high school. I did too and didn't understand it for shit <laughs> when writing it, but I could... Yeah, no. Creole like tradition in Louisiana. Oh, gosh. I don't know Louisiana. Fifole. Yeah. Fifole. So above me. 
are the illuminated souls of people who have been sent back to earth from above heaven me to atone for their wicked ways. I'm just saying that's like above me. That's a beautiful thing. So that's it's amazing. like I wish I was them. A Creole purgatory. I'm Polish and I fucking saw. So these spook lights um, are a global phenomenon, which I think is pretty fun. Um, even though this might not be unique to the Ozarks. Many locals hold on to these legends. I believe it is. <laughs> I believe it is. This is a unique type of light. These stories become really ingrained in the identities of these towns. Very much. I mean, sometimes they gain money I mean, from that. The Garden Light, what and else? you wouldn't. What else do you have do? going on in Garden? Let's be honest. But I'm still saying there's still recent, like, reports of these lights. Yeah. So that tells me something from way back when to now. There's gotta be something there. Yeah, and I know we one, will. Me and Kali will visit this yeah. at some point. We have to. And one other explanation or potential explanation that wasn't covered in any of the research, but I think that um, Lindsay has experience with actually is a. Um, potentially extraterrestrial or other explanation for what these lights might be. So I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. No, I can't say sit here and say like, man, that's aliens or man, that's a spirit or whatever. At this point, September 15th of 2020, my son and I went to Highway 23 at the uh, lookout view is what they ex describe it as. It's an area where you can just, it's a little strip where you can look out and to the Ozark Mountains. It's beautiful. Um, but there are no street lights. There are no neighbors. There's no um, suburban area. There's no anything built out. It's just mountains and old highway. And my son and I went out there and we were familiar with something called Stephen Greer and the CE5 event. Look it up. And, um, we practice meditating and we practice trying to contact extraterrestrials and we got a response. The response we got was a very, very similar to these um, lights, these orb of lights that she speaks of in these stories um, that I witnessed firsthand that I've never experienced anything in my life before when it comes to the afterlife or, and I've worked at the mortuary. Um, or anything else, my 10 year old son at the time, who is 11 now, witnessed this with me and we have no explanation except that we meditated and had the intention of contacting something other than what is here with us and we succeeded and it's literally what these people are explaining and I don't know how to explain that to you. Except you need to look up CE5 events and uh, Dr. Stephen Greer. That's all I gotta say. So I don't, I don't know. Could it be something scientific, explainable, swamp gas, whatever, headlights, maybe. Not headlights. <laughs> um, we don't know. There could be something more to this um, Ozark spook light phenomenon. But let us know if you've had any experiences with the Hornet Light, Garden Light, Crosset Light, or a light somewhere else in the Ozark region. Um, we want to visit. Yeah, we want to know. Tell us, tell us your story in the comments below. Um, and make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you want to hear more stories like this. Hey, Garden. Oh, quit being so boring. <laughs> We're using oh God, she found a squeaky bin. Oh, I love Franny. You the shit girlfriend. Franny! She does this mean face. Dude, no, she is. Look at her yes. teeth! <laughs> <laughs> Nick's threw up an entire fucking sock. <laughs> Which there... was, what's also next to Southwest Arkansas? Oh, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And in Texas too, but fuck that. Sorry. Louisiana? Um, you know, I didn't realize that until not long ago. And that's really weird that Louisiana's next to us, because I don't know shit about Louisiana, do you? I know True Blood. There's vampires. You would like True Blood. It's kind of sweaty. It's a little bit, a little bit sensual. 
sensual. But nasty. I do like nasty. So, oh, oh, Brady wants to do it. Oh, it's a girl's night. 